Hello YouTube, so this is just another video. I'm going to do some soft shackles in Amsteel. A lot of people have been asking for it and I do them slightly different. Uh, I think it's a better way um, than some of the standard ones. It's going to be quite noisy here today. So we've got uh, guinea pigs in the background. We've got Roz making something on the floor. <laughs> and we've got the camping gear stuff here. So, I'm not going to go through massive detail today, uh, but I'll show you the difference. So this is a standard um, soft shackle, slightly improved to some of them, so it's got single loop, it's got dual lines, and it's got a two strand diamond knot on the end, and then the ends are just melted a little bit. Am still doesn't melt very well, so they're just melted on the end. Now this will give you 180% of the loading on a single strand of Amsteel. So that's pretty good, 180%. So that's quite strong. But when they fail, the bit that fails is a diamond knot. It inverts and then comes off and then, uh, then it fails. Even so, this is okay to hang with, uh, but there is, you can do better. It's much more complicated, but you end up with a better shackle. So I'm going to do this type of uh, shackle now. So this is, I um, don't know what to call it really, improved soft shackle, I'm not sure. So to stop the knot inversion at the end, we create some special loops and there's a berry inside here of two inches past the end of the knot. So all the ends are inside. So there's no way this knot can invert, it's uh, completely stable. Um, the thing that breaks on this is the actual arm steel itself, usually around this joint here. Um, but this is now 230% strength of a single arm steel strand. So this is probably the, the strongest soft shackle you can make um, without having sort of triple lines and things like that. So a lightweight, instead of a carabiner, uh, you can use this just to use it, just in case you haven't seen it. Uh, where you have this loop, you just uh, pull it apart like that, and then the knot comes out. You put it around your thing like a carabiner, that goes over, and then you just tighten the knot. And there you have your uh, soft shackle. And it's very, very light and very strong. So, we're going to make one of these. Uh, it is more difficult than a standard so double soft shackle, um, but I think it's stronger, safer, and uh, there's not many videos on this, I haven't found any, so I'm going to show you how to do this. It's gone under a lot of testing and design, so uh, I think this is the way to go. Right, so you start off with a piece of arm steel. Uh, for this you're going to need uh, a piece that's 48 inches long, okay? So I've already cut this ready. Uh, 48 inches, yeah. So I'm going to thin the ends. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, see my other video. Um, I'll just thin these ends about an inch from the end and then we'll go on to the next step. Okay, so it's all prepared now. The ends are um, thinned out, taking three strands out of the end. See, see the other video if you want to know how to do that. First thing you need to do now is put some loops in the end. Now this soft shackle is really critical on sizes of loops. If you get the loops wrong size then the shackle will be less effective. It's really critical to get the right um, to get the right size loops and things like that. So measurements are really critical and when you splice it's really critical. So first of all we need to measure uh, we need a six inch berry and then a tiny loop and the loop has to be big enough for two um, thicknesses of Amsteel with a berry in. So a little bit more than two. So what you do, in one end measure uh, six inches, make a mark, and then put another mark at eight inches. So you've got six inch berry, two inches to make your tiny loop, which is enough for two strands with berries in. So go to your second mark, Again, this is super critical that you don't trap any strands and things like that. Make a hole. 
There we go. Through the hole. Put your end through the hole. Like that. Until your first mark appears. There it is. So open up this one. So you can do it for the camera. Very tricky. There. Same amount of threads on both sides. Now you have to feed the whole lot, the long end, through. Making sure no twists. And it's coming up now to. Yeah. So that's enough. That's the kind of size of loop you need. It's about from my knuckle to the end of my finger. Next thing to do is to bury this. Bury this end here. So you take it all the way along, inch and a half past the end, open it up, take your fish tool, whichever one you're using, put it in. Take your fish tool, put it in, push it all the way through. Then bring it out very close, close as you can, to this one. Oops, don't want to do that. Put it in there. So just bring it out there, very close to this one. And we'll take your end. You're going to bury. Put that in. And then fish it through. Easy. Take your loop, pull it tight, and milk the berry, and that will make that disappear. And that's long enough now for what we need. That's the size of loop that we need. Tip of your finger. Now I'm going to go ahead and do that in the other end. Okay. I won't bore you with that. I'll just get on and do that. So now we have the loops in both ends on one continuous piece and it's exactly 32 and a half inches if you want to check it see if you've got it right and this next step is really critical you get the two ends and you line them up exactly and you find the middle once you find the middle you've got to come down from there enough for two layers same size loop as these okay so I'm going to come down about, and let's measure it, just over half an inch. We're going to go in there, okay. If it's too big, it won't work. Put it in. Take the longer end, push that through. So now you have two loops at the bottom and then you have a loop at the top which is just a little, I don't know what you call it, just a little adjustable loop at the top. Okay. The idea is when it's, uh, when these two loops are exactly the same and the, the cord is straight, you end up with a loop at the end that's nice and tiny. If that's too big, it could slip off. So that's really important. Okay, nearly there now. So you take your two ends with the two loops in. You do an overhand knot. I can show you, just easy overhand knot like that. And then you dress the knot so there's no twisted lines. Everything's parallel, okay, no twists at all. And you've got your two loops up there. Open your loops a little bit and then you take your end that you just made here and you pass this through the two loops all the way down. Now you have to fiddle this to tighten up this knot. So you just feed it round, keeping everything parallel. It's quite important. I told you it's a little bit complicated. So you dress the knot. Getting there now. Okay. 
And then eventually you take each one, pull each one, and you take them both. And you pull as hard as you can, and that's a tight knot. It will tighten up a bit more when you use it. So what you have now is an overhand knot with two loops going through the original, and the berries go all the way around the knot through the end, and you end up with about a two inch berry here. That's really important. Okay, then that's finished. Open up your knot, uh, your loop, put it over your big knot, tighten it up like that. And what you should get is when it's tight, these loops should be the same. Yeah, one's not shorter than the other, it's exactly the same. And then you've got an even load of tension on both strands. Uh, and that gives you strength. So this is now 230% stronger than a single strand of arm steel. And that knot is not going to fail. Okay, so that is your improved soft shackle with a special knot and berries. So there's no loose ends. Uh, it's very strong. And that's my recommendation for a soft shackle. If you want to have a go, please do. Um, I'm going to try and make some out of lash it as well which is a lot thinner so it'd be a lot harder but it'd be good fun so there you go bye